Conscious Creatives. My name is Marissa Moses, and I'm here to share with you my pages and process. I am an intuitive artist, an art, a sacred activist, and um, I really feel like the work that I do, I'm hoping will resonate with other deep feelers and thinkers, empaths, highly sensitive people out in the world, conscious creatives and spiritually intuitive artists. Um, what I do is I read my pages, a uh, stream of consciousness that I've done from a day or perhaps collected from another day. And then I process and integrate or reflect upon what came out in that stream of consciousness. Because oftentimes I've found that um, when I show up to writing, it feels like the writing is for more than me, that it's tapping into like a collective unconscious that wants to uh, be deeply personal, yes, and also collectively witnessed because um, so much of how I have both trained to look at things as, um, as an actor, a dancer, a choreographer, director, educator is about looking for symbolism, is about all of that, um, as well as a lot of the spiritual um, research and theories and philosophies that I uh, enjoy practicing and um, attuning to, connecting with. They, um, they, for me, feel like they can live in this rich, fertile environment that my um, my writing um, can easily kind of come forward and be shared with others for as opposed to um, more collaborative, larger scale projects. Uh, and this time during the pandemic, a lot of us creatives have been finding new ways to come forward with our work, new ways to stay generative and regenerative with our process, our practice, and, and, um, and then also reconsidering how we show up into the world um, from a place of, um, of being conscious with our approach to how we're uh, using our voice and also to how we are um, being, being advocates of certain types of movements. Um, I, for one, am finding that a lot of the work I do is really somatic based, so body based, sensorially based, imagination based, imagery based. Um, I like to swim in waters of um, creativity and energetic flow patterns, um, which unless you're an artist or a creative or a kid, <laughs> that um, it just is sort of either practice retaining that awareness or you happen to have spiritual um, roots in um, cultural practices that um, attune you to that. I find the dominant culture often doesn't understand or um, is confused by or doesn't resonate with my work. And I want to say that if that's you and you're finding this one that is totally okay and you don't have to like the way I'm processing and practicing and you can move right along and go find something that resonates with you. Um, or if you are curious, but it doesn't feel familiar and you're not sure what, um, uh, how to how to listen to, to what it is I speak when I read my pages in, in a moment or in general, if you watch more than one video, um, know that that's part of what the process is about, that I'm not just reading the poetics or the very mundane things that come out in my stream of consciousness writing, but I'm also sort of taking some time afterwards to process and integrate what it meant to me and um, what it means to me on a personal level sometimes, but also on a collective level or on just a human raw um, universal level, um, because I feel like so much of this time during this pandemic for me, has there's been a big shift of where I find my connections, how I find my connections, not being in, in the classroom or the studio or the rehearsal space on a regular basis, working things out um, and spending a lot of time uh, by myself in four walls and, um, and really recalling a time in my life when I lived in a cold climate um, growing up and, um, and became creative at that point. Uh, it was the first time I started writing poetry and I loved it. Um, years later, um, about eight years ago now, but years later after I had 
started writing poetry, I began a stream of consciousness writing in journal, journal format uh, on the daily basis in the mornings doing what uh, Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way and other uh, wonderful books, um, calls morning pages where you wake up in the morning and within your first 45 minutes, you write stream of consciousness without judging or fixating or trying to correct anything that needs or wants or happens to come out. And you just kind of let, I, you either write down your thoughts or you let the words evolve. And so I've been uh, writing daily pages for about eight years. Um, here and there I go through spans where they, it doesn't happen so much. But what started to happen for me was that uh, even though your pages are something that she's, Julia Cameron is very specific and explicit about that, like they're not for anybody but you um, and to not share them, what kept coming of it and also they have something, they'll often point you in a direction of what's right for you and you can find a lot of um, creative orientation and direction by listening to what comes up in those pages and sort of following them forward. Um, and what kept coming up in mine for, for several years was share your pages, share your pages, share your pages online. They're not just for you, share your pages online. They're not just for you. So this is me sort of following that forward um, and seeing what, that, what evolves from there. What happens if I listen to that voice that says to do something um, that I've not seen anyone else do that is actually part of the practice I do that's um, not supposed to be a part of it <laughs> by the person I learned it initially from through a book. Um, but listening to my own creative voice, my own inspiration, my own sense of um, the inner compass um, and seeing where that goes. So that's why we're here today. So I'm called today to read you today's morning pages, July 12th, 2021. I am moving more and my body is learning how to acclimate to being more socially interactive. I was ran into yesterday as I was driving down a side street. Someone pulling out of their driveway with a blind spot um, came out quickly and, uh, <laughs> and drove into the front of my car. I'm kind of shaken up because of that as well. And my body feels emotionally rocked and my sacral area has, uh, was swollen last night. Um, I put some specific ointment of sorts um, to kind of help it herbal stuff on it and ice. Um, in the middle of the night, I also had to take some ibuprofen. I couldn't sleep from the discomfort. Um, I'm definitely doing some grounding practices and listening to Sacred Spoke, which is one of my favorite uh, podcasts. It's a spoken word, uh, spiritually sacred sort of poetic um, podcast that a woman has created that I resonate deeply with and it helps me release and relax into my body and start to trust myself in moments when I feel uh, unsafe or unfamiliar in my sense of self. So that helps me get to sleep last night. When I woke up, I felt kind of on top of my feelings and, um, and in my body, but also hovering above the pain itself, not inside of the pain. So today I practice softening my heart and breathing in and through my solar plexus, which is just below the heart. These practices help calm my body and integrate the feelings that are coming up. The minor crash came out of nowhere, zero preparation. And I have memories surfacing now from past experiences prior to this crash where I, I felt caught off guard by something damaging and my body feels in this moment, the personal history related to the kind of surprise impact um, I felt in the moment of the crash. Um, coming up, all these feelings are coming up from past experiences to recover and repair from. And I'm deeply aware of fear in my body. My stomach clenches and I pause control of my breath. 
to find that it actually wants to stop completely. So I let it, while my guts twist and turn and struggle for more, more room, more time, more pressure, more space, more comfort, more reassurance and care, but not breath. Completing an old cycle, how something recovers can often be a surprise. And as I allowed my body to move through that, it finds a sense of organic recovery. I have learned now how to deeply yield my inner state underneath whatever comes up that's activating and then allow that to have its own experience while I yield underneath the experience. If I don't try to fix or change what's happening dynamically, I have seen, felt it, and I can see and feel it um, without judgment and with compassion, it will find a natural resolution and organic sense of completion. This is something that I practice consciously as a somatic tool, soma meaning body, to, uh, that I have picked up from different somatic therapists, but it is also a method of creative coping that I would feel inspired to practice intuitively as a child when uh, faced with discomfort in my experience. I am and have been reintroducing this practice um, for many years now in different ways, and it has become a stalwart of my daily practices. I feel so aware of the fear in my belly telling my mind to escape, abort, leave the body, dissociate, worse is coming. This is the start of another cycle of things out of our control that we can't handle. So escape, abort, run away. Yet I hold my stomach calmly in my hand and I breathe in the real time information of my surroundings in the now being aware that we, my body and I, are not where we were mentally, emotionally, and physically the last time and times we had to dissociate during sudden impact that overwhelmed our sense of having a place that was safe in the world. My hand lends its presence on my belly now to my womb and back spasms ignite in response. There's a lot of upwelling and for one of the first times, I feel more present than washed away into the flooding. My sense of self, my conscious awareness, feels less fractured and splintered into dissociative pieces. Like it's me and there's one additional inner experience that is having a traumatic experience instead of multiple and varied simultaneous dichotomies that I'm trying to pick from or to listen to or straddle my own awareness between to figure out what's most important and topical to listen to now. Hard to tune them all out completely. I feel more like one person in this moment. Those were my pages for today. So I've been doing a lot of research for the last, pretty intensively the last year or so into um, becoming more trauma aware. I've been looking at a lot of different uh, um, psychology theories and practices and approaches, certain different ways of looking at how the mind body psyche, right? Work together or don't work together um, on purpose for coping <laughs> to uh, help us feel like we can survive, like we can, we can move through something. These, these, these inner strategies that really also make up our mental uh, health, our mental illness, our mental, our sense of mental well-being or, um, or lack thereof, um, that there is a lot of similarities in the human condition that I, as an artist who talk to a lot of artists who create work that's about practicing living in the space that's sort of between conscious and unconscious um, creative um, inspiration, right? You sort of have dreams or ideas kind of come up, they catch you off guard, but then there's also, you know, 
depending on the kind of artist you are, there is often the, okay, how do I organize? What are my intentions? How, I'm gonna, how am I gonna align this? How do I deliver this in a digestible form? How do I communicate and convey what my intention is so that an audience receives what it is that I have um, intended to communicate through the piece and the work that I'm creating? Um, for me, however, I've found that um, from a place of integrating my own sense of nervous system dysregulation and, and uh, cycles of, um, of what I experience as trauma uh, and the trauma and trauma is really an individual's personal experience. It's not the event that happens. So something that uh, causes trauma in one person might not cause trauma in another person. It depends on the sensitivities and the way that each individual takes in information and the and then is able to or not able to process that and integrate that um, or not do that and then you get kind of stuck in a repetitive state of fight flight freeze fawn um, which is when your nervous system senses fear threat um, and it's varying degrees of, of that within there so I'm finding for me, as I integrate the parts of me that have felt um, unsafe, and I think all of us as humans go through periods of time and or on a daily basis, many of us um, go through life not feeling safe. A lot of the ways we were raised culturally um, and, and familially and uh, interpersonally with our, with our romantic partners and our friendships as well, how we've navigated that coming from how we were raised. Um, it really impacts our ability or capacity to negotiate where we are and aren't experiencing safety, um, experiencing potential friendship, potential familiar, uh, friendly uh, interactions and um, and there's so much beyond, there's so much that also goes into that, like um, other people's judgments and actual legitimate threats that are out there. Other people's, um, whether that's a judgment of themselves or a judgment of others, uh, oftentimes when we judge others, there is some unintegrated experience of that inside of ourselves and or you're noticing something that is directly harmful and abusive and you're saying, no, that's not okay. So I find that a lot of the fractured, fractaled parts of my inner psyche that haven't known, well, I mean, I, I, that haven't known how to organically come into some sort of like a organizing patterning, right? To be able to communicate it, to be able to then take whatever inspiration I have as an artist, as a creative to kind of breathe into the dream that I have and then cultivate it into a piece a work a digestible format for someone else. That it's been almost this like erratic, like, no, that part we won't let you do. Like that has been part of my trauma, has been feeling like I have to make something digestible, create, um, create something not, just because I feel it moving through my body and I have a voice and I have something I wanna say and then let's work out whether or not I'm being read in a way that feels aligned or tuned to, to, to where I'm coming from. But that so, so much of my time has been about, um, well, how will the artist or how will the audience receive it? What is the messaging that I see coming out of the art itself or the piece itself or the content itself online, whether that's a YouTube video or a dance piece or a theater piece that I've produced or um, working in arts organizations and looking at the programming, that there is, is a way to look at something from a bird's eye view as you're outside of it to assess how communicative is this and how digestible is this. But then there is also on the flip side, which is where I'm at now, which is, <laughs> can be highly uncomfortable because it's it's often not what we're taught to do uh, and or if we are very often it, it also comes with mixed messages 
which is in the thing that I was going to say of what that was, is that you have some sort of a embodied inspiration that wants to come out full voice, that wants to be communicated, that feels like it's true to who you are and you want to be able to share that. And I, I sense for me, the reason that I have a hard time with that is because I've spent so much time training myself out of that. Uh, when we go to school and me in performance training, a lot of it is figure out how to make the shape, um, create the form, hit your mark, uh, learn the choreography, remember your lines, and then do it in a consistent way. And then magically fill it with your emotions. And there are exercises and whatnot that I've learned through acting that is designed to help you embed your emotions into it, but, um, or however you want to phrase that. But um, for me, I've always had resistance to actually like acting approaches <laughs> to acting. I have like a very big, no, not for me. This is not right. Something is off here. Something feels wrong. And I'm identifying that because as an artist, that the kind of artist that I am, the kind of art that I align to is um, not the kind of, uh, it, it doesn't always have, sometimes it can, it doesn't always, but it doesn't always have the simplicity that I think um, can feel really nice for people to just be like, oh, I understand this, A, B, C, one, two, three, this happens and that and that, and we close, right? That whole keep it simple, stupid thing. Every time I do that, and I can do it, and I have done it, and you know, I've, I've taught preschoolers, and I'm good at it, and they're so sweet, and I do enjoy it. And at the same time, I just, there's something inside of me that's like, get me out of here. I need to speak more, speak louder, speak longer, speak more verbosely about what it is that I'm experiencing. I want to share what it is that I'm experiencing directly in the moment, in the right now. And to me, when I've landed in alignment in moments of being on stage where I'm like this, this feels right. This feels like I've caught some sort of wave, wave or I've opened some sort of portal and I'm free in it. And I think those are the moments when we watch um, theater or dance or film or TV or um, whether it's live or captured and we go, wow, that was magical. Or, oh my gosh, that hit me somewhere that felt so personal. Or, you know, those, those, those captivating moments that we're drawn to and you can feel goosebumps on your arm stand up because the truth of the experience of the performance is so raw and real and that can happen in poetry or in written words as well um, or in paintings and visual arts um, it, can, it can happen in any sort of expressive creative practice and so the <laughs> this is sort of I guess what I'm doing here I'm seeing if I can utilize YouTube as a medium to have some sort of expressive creative practice which feels very counterintuitive because of the way that because of my judgments about what YouTube is, but also as my my um, my witness of what I how I've seen it to function, is that there might not be space for this online. I mean, there's space because there's space, but um, I feel so esoteric sometimes, and I notice that I'll talk to to sometimes 20 people. And of that 20, one to three goes, I really understand what you're saying. And so if I'm speaking to like what, five to 10% of artist population um, and artists are, are already ones that are like consciously attuning to it. I think we're all artists, we'll have the capacity. It's not like a hierarchical thing. It's just, what do you, what do you practice listening to? And, and as creative artists, we practice listening to creativity <laughs> and creative energies and inspiration and ide ideation and ideas and brainstorming and different approaches. 
So even within communities of people who practice that on a daily basis on in the regular and study and train in it and teach it, I still find that like five to 10% of those people when I talk, when I really just let myself talk about things, really understand what it is I'm saying. So I think that my intention here, speaking to you, um, is to be able to have that converse, have these conversations that I don't always get to have, but sometimes do get to have and are wonderful when I am able to um, with others in real life time to time. And perhaps you're someone who is, is, is longing or craving a sense of um, knowing that you're not alone because you think, feel, sense, experience the world in a similar way as I do. Um, and when there's a depth of processing, like the one that I'm describing for myself, and if that's in you, it can it can feel very isolating and alone, and it also can feel very expansive and and um, everywhere at the same time. There's there's a like a I mean, depending on where you're at in your cycle, you might feel one more than the other, but also you might feel both in varying degrees or equally at the same time, and. I like to have conversations about that. I like to have conversations about that being okay, about that actually being very natural and normal and something that we can breathe into together that um, we don't have to, we can certainly align to our core values and our sense of what's right. And at the same time, while we do that, we can allow our experience of our our home, our relationships, our environment, our daily walking to the car, or opening a refrigerator door or sitting down to write that script or going into the rehearsal studio to work on that choreography or sitting down to your lines to memorize what it is and, it, and, and how it's gonna feel embodied as the words for you without trying to pre-plan, but letting them be there for you. Like you can rest in the ritual of the words um, and allow freedom to flow from there, that there is a way that we can, that I think we can, those of us who experience like this or who want to experience like this, we can consciously choose to step into a considerate, a, a considerate practice of um, giving space for ourselves and each other to explore in a way that is emergent, that is um, not necessarily goal oriented, isn't about bottom lines and top dollars. It's not about having the product and and the and the final the final cut of something, although those things may emerge as part of your emergent strategy or process along the way, but that you can allow yourself to be fallibly human, creatively, I don't wanna say reckless, but creatively you take chances, you can take risks without it being something that, um, that feels quite so threatening or otherizing from your own life that there's a way to build a community of um, with one in, with one another that we can do this. And, and I've, I've, I've had pockets of time with, with, with individual artists who are collaborators or friends and also classes of students who I've had for periods of time throughout a semester or two that, um, that we get to the, that sweet spot, those sweet spots and they're so beautiful. And I think that I'm looking to create a considerate and consistent practice of showing up to that consciously. And for some reason, my pages are a part of that and which that's why I'm here with you. Um, I also have, in addition to where I'm sharing this on my pages and process um, channel, I also have um, other projects that I, sort of am aware of at the same time that this is helping me forward into so that this can kind of be a practice for me to, to ground and clarify like who I am, what I stand for, who I stand with, so that when I enter into, into the other um, avenues, whether that's um, creating and sharing my work as, as, a, as a 
as an artist, which I'm still figuring out, what am I? Am I a choreographer, a director, a facilitator, a collaborating producer? Um, and figuring out my intention and how I want to move forward in the kind of work that I want to do, because I've been doing mostly so solo uh, work for a while and or working with students in a classroom, which is has a little bit of a different um, tone to it. Um, how, when, if I move forward with my own personal work in that way, and then there's also um, teaching and creating a sense of conscious collaboration from a place of integrity, but like through 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 showing up in daily practices, um, through um, being aware of the clarity that what we do as creative artists is gather lots of different resources, sort of put them in a cauldron of sorts and throw our intention as though we're casting a spell into it to create um, magic and letting and to 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 integrate magical language um, in a in an intentional way um, not by a happenstance way but a very intentional way to integrate the language around magic back into the performing arts um, and the ways of listening to um, to the cycles of nature and to listening to um, cycles of our own lives and seasons and chapters and letting things be more cyclical as opposed to linear uh, in our trajectories because when we can allow ourselves to live cyclically create cyclically hmm, say that 10 times fast um, it is my experience that 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 can kind of release the valve a little bit of the uh, hustle culture that we uh, are getting bombarded with a lot through uh, dominant culture of they have to get to the next best thing or you know each rung uh, it's like ladders it uh, rungs in a ladder and you have to keep climbing the ladder to get to the thing um, and and as creative artists there are absolutely ways you can identify to kind of piece out um, your hopes, your dreams, your intentions with your career or with the way you want to move forward. I'm not saying don't do that, but um, but there is also kind of a unlearning of a, I have to do this before I can do that, or I want to get there, but first I have to jump through these hoops and I have to feel terrible about myself or do the job I hate or do the thing that I don't align with in order to put in my time to get to the X, Y, Z. Um, and again, not to dismiss or discredit the potential very real reality of some of those things, there is also a way that I choose to show up into my approach to working with myself and with others that um, can be a little bit more holistic, integrative, um, attuned to subtleties and complexities within any given situation. And, uh, and that is, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so if you enjoyed our time together today um, for what it is, know that I'm gonna continue to find ways to show up outside of my pages and process, but also within my pages and process like I have today here with you. And uh, if you'd like to join me in the actual practice of the writing or in other uh, practices that I might incorporate into sharing, um, I do have a Patreon um, under Marissa Moses and I would love for you to join me over there, uh, patreon.com slash Marissa Moses. And I will see you next time. Bye.